Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing these Honda LED fog lights from CycleMax.com onto a 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour. A link to the Honda installation instructions can be found in the description of this video. Place your motorcycle on the center stand. Fold the mirrors toward the rear of the bike. If you have upper air deflectors installed, you'll need to remove them. Remove the two 5mm bolts that hold the upper air deflectors in place. Remove the upper air deflector with the collars attached and set them aside. Remove the 5mm Allen screw that holds the arm panel in place. Then remove the plastic arm panel. The rear view mirrors are held in place with two 8mm hex bolts. Remove these using a ratchet and a socket. And here you can see the connector. And if I pull up on it, it should disconnect or release. So let's try that. It's a little tricky because you have to hold the mirror with one hand. There we go. Part of that connector, you see this little this little tab right there, if you lift up on that, and it's, it's fortunately it's a very weak tab, it's not very strong, so it doesn't take much. Open both saddlebag doors and remove both of the side cover panels. Disconnect the heated seat connector on the right side of the motorcycle in front of the saddlebag. Remove the 6mm Allen bolts and washers on each side of the seat at the very front. Masking tape can be used to prevent paint damage during seat removal. You begin by releasing the two nylon pins at the front of the seat. Pull up firmly on both sides at the same time. Then, begin working the seat forward and up, making sure that the connector is free. Okay, to remove this inner cowl, I want to show you where it is. If you're looking at the front of the bike, I'm looking, I'm on the actual, on the right side of the bike. You can see here, it's this plastic piece, and it runs all the way, and then it actually runs up here, um, up a little higher, so it's all one piece. And it's held in place with two screws and f uh, six clips, I believe. So there's one screw here and one screw here. These are five millimeter Allen screws. And then we have a body clip here, a body clip here, a body clip here. There's three there. And then it's hard for me to get this camera back there and the light and everything, but there's, there's one right back here and then there are two up here. Can you see those? Up there and up there. And the top one is actually easier to get out from above the bike looking down next to the handlebars. This one, the bottom one, you can get out from here. But the top one is easier to get out from above. Just go down through the uh, tunnel next to the handlebars and you'll be able to get that clip out. So I'm going to remove this and then we'll take a look at it once we get it out. The deflector panel, shown here, is held in place with two 5mm screws and a series of clips along the edge of the panel, both on the inside and the outside edge. 
once you've removed the two 5mm screws that hold the deflector in place. You can begin to release the clips. I like to start at the bottom. And if you just pull on this black plastic, it's rather flimsy and malleable. You can, you can sort of remove these clips. And you'll hear some noise when you're doing it. Don't be concerned. That's just normal. You can see the clips here. Now, you're going to do this on both sides of the bike, and you also want to, once you're finished, release this body clip uh, from the shelter. On the inside of the middle cowl, just in front of the radiator, you'll find another body clip that must also be removed. Remove the 5mm screw at the top of the middle cowl. If you look at the back side of the cowl, you can see the pins that are used to fit into the grommets on the bike. And these will be removed first. You can also see the series of plastic clips along the edge that hold the upper part of the cowl into place. Here you can see the location of the two body clips that hold the middle cowl into place. And here are the two mounting points for the two 5mm screws that hold the middle cowl. It's important to take note of this positioning pin at the very front of the cowl on the pointed part, and that fits into a hole on the front of the bike just underneath the headlight. And that's why we start removing this cowl from the back, not from the front. You don't want to break that pin or that hole. I like to start by releasing the grommet at the bottom, at the bottom of the radiator grill, and then start working those grommets out at the back pointed end of the shelter as I'm doing here. And then you'll start pulling those clips loose, and trust me, it will be loud when they come loose. Okay, this step actually goes before we take out all these screws. We need to undo this connector right here. And there's a little tab on the back. It's actually on a, it's just on a little stay. So basically what you want to do is you just want to un, you just want to press that little tab in. I'll show it to you here in a second. And you just slide it back off of this little, this little uh, holder here. And if you look on the back of this, you can see this little tab that you press in. You see how you press that in? Now we also are going to need to remove this other little, this little clip right here, which is holding another cable that we need access to because this is also attached to a piece that we're going to be removing. So we're going to get some needle nose pliers. You just kind of press in on these two sides and it will push or pull right through that hole right there. Okay, there's another connector, a two pin connector back here and it's on another one of those little stays, those little clips. And there's a tab on the back side that we have to get to to release it. It comes up and we need to get that uh, released as well. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see it a little better. See this clip right, this is the uh, connector. And the little tab is going to be underneath. It's hard to get the light in there. Sorry about the voice. Okay, we have to remove this little pocket cable and it's clipped into this metal bracket. So we're going to pop this out. And once we do that, we can come down here and get the little, the little ball to release, I think. There we go. See how that cable comes right out? Remove the two 5mm Allen screws from the base of the top shelter. Remove the 5mm Allen screws and collars from the top front of the shelter. They're just under the speakers. Okay, there's two more body clips, or what I call rivets, and they're kind of right down here inside this tunnel. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's so dark right there. Now uh, I'm trying to use my phone to get a picture of that. But we got to remove those two. You can see where they are here, kind of behind the handlebars.
there's another body clip kind of hidden toward the back of the top shelter on the inside wall. And uh, it's hard to see, but you need to get that out as well. With all the body clips and screws removed, you can then carefully begin releasing all of the other plastic clips that hold in the top shelter and carefully remove it as shown. Remove this center uh, control panel. And to do that, we've got these two screws, one on each side, you can see here. There's also some little uh, body clips let me get over here, there might be more light. There's one on each side, just right in front of these uh, screws that have to come out. Okay, we have to disconnect these connectors right here. And basically, I'm just going to slip that one off of that little tab there. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Now once I get that apart, I can just slip this right back on there, because I don't need that. This one I can get to right here. I'm just going to mash this little gray tab. I should be able to pull up on it and get it to come out. There we go. Okay, the other two connectors that we have to disconnect are on the left side of the bike, right in front of the glove box. I've, I've got the camera so that you can't see the glove box because the white against the black causes it makes it harder to see the black parts. So here's one right here. We've got a little tab where you're going to press in here and we'll pull up on it and it should come loose. It did just like the other one. Okay, so that one's loose now. And then there's another one down here, kind of buried down here. Looks like it's on one of those little, those little, um, frame stays as well. So let's get it out. I know it's hard for you to see because my hands are in the way. But now it's off the frame. And this is the hardest one to get to so far because the little tab is going to be way down. Here we go. Now I've got it out where I can see it. And there's the little tab right there mash down on that and we should be able to pull that apart there it comes it's just a little tight okay so now we have all four connectors disconnected so you gotta check all your cables here and make sure everything is coming along with it here's these two because they're kind of underneath some of the little See, there's two of the cables right there, and I'm going to check the other side. Okay, as it turns out, I think at the factory, they actually put this last cable behind another cable that they didn't need to, made it a little harder to get out. Uh, what I did is I actually loosened the rubber strap holding on the ECU and let it just hang out a little bit, and that gave me a little more room to work. You might find you have to do the same thing on the left side. So now that all the cables are undone. Please pay very close attention to how to remove the center console from your motorcycle. The center console is held in place by a nylon pin clip. And you'll notice in the front, there's a small protrusion. It looks like a little fin. And when the console slips down over this clip and slides backward, that fin holds the front of the console secure and in place. To properly remove the console, you need to straddle the motorcycle. Don't attempt to do this while you're standing on the left or the right side. Grip the console firmly with both hands, then slide it forward, and then pull up, straight up, towards you firmly with both hands at the same time. Okay, now we're going to turn this over. And when we do, I want you to see these four screws, because these have to come out, they hold these little gray trim pieces on, and those have to come out so that we can get access to the switches. With all four screws removed, you can then begin pulling the uh, side pieces away from the body. There are a few clips that hold it in place. You just pull on it and they will come loose.
Now we'll need to remove these two screws and then we need to pull off this uh, kind of black polished garnish that we have here. So let's get these two screws out. Now these are even these are even smaller than the last two we took out from the back of that other part. Oh, that one just comes right off. Well, maybe not. There may be something up here holding it. Let me see. Yeah, there's a little strange little clip up here. There we go. It just kind of pops right out. So that, that one actually comes off pretty easily. With the garnish removed, this is what we're looking at. Now you can tell I've already installed the home link buttons down at the bottom, but we're going to replace this center button with the fog light uh, button. And to do that, we need to remove this one single Phillips screw down at the base, and the uh, dummy or the blank will just pull right out. Now we're ready to install the fog light button, as you can see here, and it only goes in one way. There's a, a little bit of an indention at the top of the button, and that goes in toward the top of the console, and it just slips right down into that opening. And once it does, it locks into place, and then you can see you can just press it on and off like a button. Now you can reassemble the console piece. Uh, in reverse order. Basically just reinstall the garnish and then put the side pieces back on and we're ready to reinstall this back on the motorcycle. Now it's time to replace and reinstall all the parts we've removed up to this point. You need to do it in this particular order. If you want really in-depth step-by-step instructions on how to install or remove these various parts, check out my 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing maintenance videos. I'll put a link down in the description for you to get more information. The fog light covers are held in place with two 5mm Allen bolts. Go ahead and remove these using a 5mm Allen wrench and then pull out to remove the fog light covers. The lower cowl is held in place with two 5mm Allen bolts one on the front and one at the rear. Using a 5mm Allen wrench, remove these bolts and then pull the cowl out from the top and the bottom, releasing the pins that hold it into place. The lower inner cowl is held in place with four 5mm Allen bolts, two of which are shown here. There's also a plastic boss that fits into a rubber grommet on the frame. The front lower cowl is held in place with two 8mm bolts, one on each side of the motorcycle. Go ahead and remove these and set the front lower cowl off to the side. We'll need to modify the fog light covers by removing the round blank that is in the center. And I use these little uh, wire cutters to just kind of snip out those little tabs that hold this round cover in place. Uh, they're a pretty soft plastic, so you can just cut right through those little tabs. And once you've done that for all the tabs, uh, it'll just fall right out. Now, it's a good idea to clean up any leftover plastic uh, shavings using a little file or whatever method you want to use, just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And now we're ready to install the foam cushion that comes in your fog light kit. And you basically just install it per the Honda instructions, kind of go around in a circle uh, as shown. Now we're ready to assemble the mounting brackets. You'll notice each bracket has two pretty large holes on the ends, and we'll need to install these rubber grommets. Now, I like to use a little silicone grease uh, to kind of make it easier to install. Now, I use silicone grease because it won't damage the rubber. It won't cause any deterioration. This is what they'll look like uh, once they're installed. And it takes a little work to kind of force these into that groove, but once they're installed, uh, you're ready to move on to the next step.
Now we're ready to install the fog light adjuster and you do it using one of these six millimeter bolts and I like to do it this way. I like to put the spacer in and then just barely slip that nut over just a couple of threads and then you can slide it in to the uh, little slot. It's a little easier than doing it the way Honda recommends and then you tighten it down with an eight millimeter uh, socket. Now this is what it should look like once it's installed. Just get a good look at that. You'll notice the nut is inside that slot. And of course, as is typical, I usually show you how to do this on one, uh, but you have to do it for both fog lights and for both brackets as well. Now we're ready to mount the fog lights inside the stay, or I call it a bracket, Honda calls this a stay, but you basically lay it on top and when you get all the holes to line up you know you've got it in the right position. And I like to start out uh, by putting the six millimeter bolt uh, into the uh, adjuster where the little adjuster nut is uh, already welded kind of the back of the adjuster bracket. and then put in those little uh, six millimeter screws on each side. Now I'm just going to let you follow the instructions that come with the Honda manual uh, for installing those little screws in the side. Here I'm using the eight millimeter socket to just make sure that uh, fog light adjuster is tight on the fog light itself and then I also want to tighten down these uh, Phillips screws on each side. You do want to leave the adjuster nut though on the outside loose so that you can adjust it once you get it onto the motorcycle. It'll also make it a little bit easier to install. Now, I think it's easier to install this wire tie at the very end, this cable tie. And you just clip it into the little slot and then you just want to obviously wrap it around the uh, fog light wire. So it just kind of holds it in place, holds it up next to the bracket so that it doesn't, uh, I think it's a lot easier than having to measure 80 millimeters from the back of the fog light and all that. I, I don't know why they do it that way. So this is how I did it. Now we're finally ready to install the fog lights on the motorcycle. I'm going to start on the left side of the bike. And the first thing we want to do is place these little metal collars inside the rubber grommets. Now the upper mounting grommet, uh, the collar goes on the outside of the grommet and then the lower mounting grommet goes on the inside. And it kind of makes sense when you see how this all mounts up. You don't want the head of a bolt uh, to be tightening down on that rubber itself. So I'm going to do this a little differently than Honda recommends. I'm going to go ahead and install this side bolt, which is an 8 millimeter flange bolt, and put the nut and washer on the inside. And I'm going to leave it very, very loose. And that's going to make it easier for me to install this, what Honda calls a pipe band, which is the upper mounting point. You can see it kind of up there on the, on the right of the uh, engine guard. And right now I'm just routing the wire behind the frame uh, to get it out of the way. But now we can put this pipe band into place. And if you start on the outside, you've got enough room to where you can kind of put this thing together and then slide it over toward the inside of the motorcycle so that it fits properly as shown so that that uh, mounting bracket or stay lines up correctly. Now we just use one, another one of those 8 millimeter flange bolts to go down and connect to the welded on nut uh, and just go ahead and tighten this down. Now this can all be tightened down uh, really good and tight. We can adjust the uh, vertical uh, aim of the light later. Now the right side fog light is going to install exactly the same way. You want to make sure you route that wire behind the frame. If you look at the very front of the engine down toward the bottom, you'll find the dummy plug. And this is where we're going to connect up our fog lights. You want to remove that plug by pressing in the tab and then pulling down and it will release. Uh, mine had a little dirt on it, so you might want to make sure that's good and clean uh, before we connect the harness. Now these white wire uh, cable ties that have little clips on them, you go ahead and clip them into place on the wire harness that comes with your fog light kit. 
With the cable ties installed now, we can go ahead and hook our fog light harness up to the motorcycle harness as shown. And let's go ahead and connect the right fog light wire up to that fog light harness. On the right side of the motorcycle, after you've got everything connected, it's a good idea to go ahead and start using some of those cable ties that come in the kit. Uh, and just follow the instructions on where to tie these up. Here I'm tying the right fog light wire up to the frame. And you don't want to cut off the ends of these particular cable ties because these particular cable ties, they allow you to actually remove them later if you need to. So here I'm cinching the uh, harness up to the main wiring harness and just kind of using some of these cable ties to get all these wires up and out of the way. Now I'm going to move back over to the left side of the bike and tie up that little fog light wire to the frame on the left side and go ahead and hook up the last connector and then we'll of course use that uh, white con uh, cable tie to tie it up to the wire harness. Now is a good time to test the lights. Turn the motorcycle ignition switch on and press that fog light button and make sure the little light comes on on the dash showing that the fog lights are on and of course make sure the fog lights are illuminated. The lights are working. You can reinstall all of these parts in this particular order. It's very important that you do it in the correct order. Now, if you want more detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to remove and install all of these different parts, check out my 2018 Honda Goldwing maintenance videos. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can get more information.